Hi, my name is Alex and I'm a music composer and I've had the luck to play Final Fantasy 16 for quite a few hours. I was invited by Square Enix themselves at the media tour events and today I want to talk a bit about the music based on the things I've heard while playing the demos and also the things that we've all heard in the trailers and the footage that came out recently. The first thing I want to do is address the elephant in the room, reply to the question of is Final Fantasy XVI soundtrack going to be made mostly of epic choir track and epic orchestral tracks, like we've heard in the trailers? Personally, for what I've experienced and what I've noticed analyzing the music, I get the feeling that this soundtrack is going to have a fair degree of genre variety in it. But it's not going to be always obvious. Let's take this theme, for example, which is one of the fan favorites from the trailers that came out. And by the way, sorry, but I couldn't cut the trailer noises out because we still don't have access to the tracks themselves. But... This is what it sounds like. You know, that one. Super freaking epic. And then it goes here. So freaking awesome. To me, that's a very, very great theme and I freaking love it and it's really well made. But I can see some other person who maybe has a different taste and they may say, oh, this is another typical orchestral, epic orchestral theme that I heard in games so many times over, but uh, it doesn't really sound that special. Well, I personally took some time to rewrite that theme by ear to notice how it was made and why I liked it. And in doing so, I noticed there are several layers in it. Underneath all that epic choir, we have something like this. Like some very sad strings. This is what's happening in the theme. It's part of it. It's just an underneath layer. So when you stripe it down of that uh, power, you notice there's some storytelling there. This is not like it's just a simple epic theme. There's a lot of tragedy behind it. Then obviously there's the power given by the epic string staccato. They sound like this. Which give it a sense of like, you know, a looming crisis sort of thing. So we can tell a bit of the story just by hearing the theme. And then obviously if you add the epic choir on top, it just becomes... Which is super cool. Love those melodies that you price. Now, the thing that I love about this theme is that, one, the melody sounds freaking amazing and memorable, and two, they were orchestrated so, so, so good in this game. Like, my example is super crappy, but when you hear the real thing... It sounds massive, but most especially, one thing you notice if you pay attention to this is that this track is quite fast. In fact, the tempo of it is 167 BPM, which is like quite intense for an orchestral track. And in fact, if we check out the percussion underneath all this trailer noise... It's like... There's that sort of vibe, which is literally the basic pattern for drum and bass. Let's see what happens if I turn this into drum and bass really quickly. It kind of fits into the rhythm, it's so... Okay. Again, my sound is crappy. I didn't have so much time to like produce it properly. But when you notice how, how well it fits to a drum and bass pattern, it feels like this is a drum and bass song that was then orchestrated after. Or it's an orchestral track with drum and bass influences. Now, the interesting thing is that I was reading an interview with Soken and uh, the game directors, and they were talking about uh, the soundtrack a little bit. And apparently, the main inspiration for this soundtrack has been classical music. I think my hero son was the one who decided, because this is a dark fantasy game and a dark fantasy story, he wanted a soundtrack that was harkening back to classical music. And so, uh, according to this interview uh, from Dan Famicom Gamer, Yoshi P went and made a playlist of classical music that he thought would fit the game and then sent it to Soken. And then Soken had to write some music that was inspired by classical music, which is why many of the tracks we heard in Final Fantasy XVI's trailer sound very operatic and very, like, dark. But at the same time, we're talking about Masayoshi Soken, a guy who writes so much versatile scores, and he's 
very proficient at rock music and electronic music and all these things. So I'm not surprised that in this epic operatic orchestration of dark fantasy music, game, whatever, he's hiding some drum and bass soul in it, which is a crossover that people may not see coming, but it fits so well. And that's why it's so frenetic, but also so epic. So that's just one theme, but let's take another one, for example, one that when I heard it on the trailer side, I lost my mind. I was like, this is a banger. I fucking love it. So it's this one. And again, forgive the trailer noises, but you know this theme. The dominant theme. And the cool thing about this theme is not necessarily the rhythm, but the melody. And let's hear it once again without the trailer noises. I, I did like a quick orchestration that's a bit faster and sounds like this. So this melody. In a way, it's a simple melody, simple enough to be memorable. It's very lyrical, it's very beautiful, it's very simple. When I heard it the first few times, I was like, well, this is already stuck in my mind so easily. And it's one of those melodies that I would imagine at a concert. You know, a band or a DJ even is playing like the electronic version of this track. And as soon as the chorus kicks in, the crowd goes wild singing it together with the instrumental. So I get the feeling that underneath this theme, we have a secret sort of like rave party music, <laughs> electronic music. So I decided to give it a go and see what happens if we turn this into a club banger. This is the result. I mean, it kind of works. Imagine that, like hearing this at a massive stadium and the, the bass like and everybody around you and you as well are singing this epic Final Fantasy 16 melody. That would work perfectly in the way this melody was written. And also it would work for, I don't know, a rock concert in a similar way. It's basically a stadium chant. And it feels like this, this theme that we heard there is literally like an anthem of a nation almost, uh, which also makes me think, one of Soken's potentials and one of, one of his strongest suits as a composer is that in Final Fantasy XIV, for example, he literally wrote many anthems for different nations, like, you know, Gridania and Ulda and Kugane and all, all these places. And all these anthems, all these themes he wrote are so unique and so beautiful. And Final Fantasy XVI instead, its story is literally a conflict of nations. And so every dominant, every, every main character, let's say, is representing a different nation. And I would expect that probably we're gonna have themes like this that are singable and awesome and that can be used as leitmotifs throughout the soundtrack for each one of these nations, so maybe each one of these dominants. Uh, and that's so interesting to me because again, it's not just a, a question about what genre of music this is, but also a question of like, what's the soul of the music? The soul of the first theme I talk about is drum and bass. The soul of this other theme is, in my opinion, rave music, which is super cool. There's also a portion of another theme that to me kind of sounds like Western music. Now we're just talking about the epic orchestral tracks, obviously, but in this game, there's so much more than that. Uh, you might have heard this already or seen this already, but there's some very beautiful, calm, relaxing tracks that play when you're roaming around the nature. For example, this theme right here. The melody in this theme specifically is so beautifully executed and implemented in the game because before you hear it in that portion of the game, you basically hear this melody in Clive's hometown as a background music on some bagpipes. I mean, bagpipes. I can't recall last time I heard bagpipes in Final Fantasy outside of 
14 maybe and maybe 11. They were very prominent in Final Fantasy IX. I really love them there. But bagpipes are carrying the lead melody in Clive's hometown and it's the same melody that we heard just now. And as you go throughout the game, the first few hours, there's going to be a scene with some soldiers of Rosaria that sing that same melody, but in form of a song with lyrics and you see them sort of like chanting this anthem of their nation. So when you hear it in the, in the game soundtrack, no matter where you are, you're going to remember your home, your hometown, your, your, you know, where you come from. And it's very beautifully portrayed in the game. And hearing it in that open world area made me emotional, even if I just played the game just a few hours, because I remember what that motif, that melody means, because I've seen people sing it with so much glee and the voice actors and the, the motion capture and everything. It was so well coordinated that in the scene where the soldiers were singing that theme, it felt real kind of. And it, it just impressed upon me how many of the leitmotifs and themes written by Soken for the score are just not random. They just have so much meaning in the story of the game itself. Other than that, there's also other relaxing themes that I heard that feature other instruments. Like I heard a theme somewhere that featured a Rhodes piano. Uh, and I cannot recall when I heard a Rhodes piano in a fan high fantasy score like this, but you know, Soken is Soken, so he, he, he goes crazy. And I mean, Soken basically confirmed in interviews that the Final Fantasy 16 soundtrack is going to be around eight hours long and 200, basically 200 pieces of music are going to be in the main soundtrack. And I don't know if that includes all the music in the game or if they're going to do like FS7 remake with release multiple albums. I have no idea. But the soundtrack has eight discs with 200 pieces of music. So I'm quite ready to bet that it's not all going to be epic choir music. And I'm also going to tell you, in my own experience of playing the game, there's a very specific context where I've noticed choir music and other contexts where it didn't appear at all. And this is just speculation because, again, I haven't played the whole thing. I must have played around 10 hours or less than that. Uh, but personally, for what I noticed is choir is a device used to represent something majestic, something huge, something epic. And in this game, obviously, the epic huge thing is going to be the icons, which reminds strongly of stuff like Attack on Titan. Now, when you listen to the Attack on Titan score, whenever the Titans emerge and there's some meaningful scene with them, you hear this massive choir coming in, emphasizing the tragedy of the, of the situation. And I get the feeling that that's the same thing that they did on Final Fantasy 16. Again, just speculation because I haven't played the entire game, but I've only heard choir whenever icons were either on the screen or they were sort of like mentioned. They were part of what was going on. Uh, when I was fighting like bosses uh, that were kind of huge, like there's a, there's a Marlboro boss in one of the first chapters. The track that plays there is epic but I don't recall hearing Epic Choir in it. And I don't recall even hearing Epic Choir in any portion of the game where no icons were in sight or mentioned. So I get the feeling that we heard Choir a lot in the trailers because obviously they're going to choose the most hype track for the trailers. But also, if they only use Choir in the scenes with icons, I still think we're going to hear a lot of it because there's a lot of iconic fights. But I think there's going to be a contrast between the moments where we don't hear it and the moments where we do hear it. Personally, in terms of genre, I'm very fond of what I've heard. Also, in the interview at Dan Famicom Gamer, the directors were talking about how Soken, yeah, he was given a specific direction to go to, like, hey, something influenced by classical music, dark fantasy score, but, I mean, it's Soken. And Soken is a rock star, he's very proficient at rock and electronic music and so many genres, and he has a massive love for Bossa Nova, and his favorite band is like Rage Against the Machine. Like, this is a person with influences that go all over the place, and when you hear his music, you can totally feel it. And, uh, and I think in the interview, the directors were talking about how during development, there was a specific moment where Soken basically sent a track for a portion of the game, but the track was like wildly different from the style that they asked. And Soken was kind of unsure about it at the start, but apparently the director, when they heard that, they were like, oh yes, this is it. This is finally Soken unleashed. This is why we have this guy here on the soundtrack, because he's the type of person who's going to do something that is wildly different from what we expect and somehow fits the game perfectly. And that's apparently what happened. That track that Soken wrote, thinking, oh, maybe this is too outlandish, actually fit the game so, so amazingly. And even if it goes against sort of like the main sound, let's say, they decided to keep it. It wasn't mentioned in that then Famicom interview what track it is specifically because the director said that it's an important track for the game. They don't want to spoil the moment where it happens. But they said it's something very special and they said we should look forward to it. Speaking back about that Rosaria melody, I want to talk about iconic melodies and leitmotifs in the game. Uh, leitmotifs being like themes that resurface time and time again to represent a character or situation or nation or context or whatever. Uh, Final Fantasy is basically full of them, especially the older Nobuo Matsu scores. They were like 
leitmotiv galore. It was they were everywhere and it was beautiful. In F7, you hear you know the F7 main theme resurfaced so many times. And one thing that people may not know about Soken is that Soken actually worked together with Uematsu at some point. Uh, <laughs> I had an interview with Soken and also with Uematsu, but I, I asked this question to Soken uh, of how he got the gig at Square Enix, and basically told me uh, he were hired during the Final Fantasy X era. Now, this is just speculation, but knowing a bit of how Japanese culture works, I suppose that during the time when Soken was working together with Uematsu, and I think Soken was working as sound designer, if I'm not wrong, during that time, I suppose, they must have gone out drinking very often after work or something like that. And being that close to a person like Uematsu, definitely, like, his shine will rub on you and you will learn a lot from him. And Soken is a person that is always interesting in grow growing and just getting better and better and better. So I would be surprised if they didn't have lots of conversations with Uematsu about soundtrack writing. And in fact, one thing that I saw he mentioned in the Dan Famicom interview is that when working on the Final Fantasy XVI soundtrack, Soken often asks himself the question of like, okay, what would Uematsu do here? How would he do this score? And one thing that he figured out Uematsu would do is write a lot of light motifs. So there's many like small themes that kind of resurface, even just in the few tracks that we heard, just in the previews and stuff. Uh, there's a bunch that I already recognize. And one of them is this one. That's one thing that I heard uh, a lot, and it sounds quite sweet. I would assume maybe it's Clive's theme, and if it is, it's interesting, because Clive is such an, let's say, aggressive character, at least when he's older and he's pent up on revenge, essentially. But this theme sounds very sweet, so it would be interesting, interesting contrast. Anyway, this theme resurfaces throughout 16 quite a lot. And uh, for example, we heard it in these other occasions. And that to me is very beautiful because it's changed quite dramatically throughout the different contexts that it's been used in. And for me, this sort of usage of leitmotifs is one of the things that I love the most about video game music. And it's one of the things I love the most about Nobu Uematsu himself. So hearing Soken do that a lot here is very nice. And it's not something that he started doing in 16 either. Like he, in Final Fantasy XIV, does the same thing very beautifully. But I think here it was executed even better in 14. Speaking of Soken and Uematsu, another thing that I've noticed is that Soken seems to pay respect and pay homage to Uematsu in the soundtrack quite a bit. Uh, one thing that made me super happy while I played the game is that the, you know, the first track that I heard on the logo screen is the prelude, which is great because the prelude is like classically the, you know, the main, the main, the, the theme that plays at the start of every older Final Fantasy game. Let's, there's newer Final Fantasy games that do not feature it, like Final Fantasy 13, I think, doesn't feature it, but in terms of 16, that's literally the first thing you hear when you turn on the game, because it's the logo screen. Not only that, but I think it's also one of the first themes that I've heard in the very first cutscene in the game. And it's an interesting callback, and it's, it's interesting that they start the game with this iconic theme. We have also heard the Final Fantasy theme being used prominently in the trailers. For example, there's this more like subdued, relaxing version. But then there's also this epic version that features choir screaming the summon names as lyrics, which is crazy. <laughs> and as a reference to one of my favorite Final Fantasy games, I've noticed that while I was in the Rosaria area, I was just roaming around in the beautiful green and nature. When I would engage a monster, I would notice that the battle theme that would start we we'll start with an interestingly uh, odd time signatured string staccato pattern, which reminded me of one of my favorite battle themes. No holding back. Yeah. 
It's not exactly the same, but it starts with the same philosophy and same instruments, sort of like similar ideas. And I wouldn't be surprised if this is literally a homage to Final Fantasy VIII, in which case, awesome. I love it. And it's great that, you know, Soken has such great taste in music. And lastly, another reference to another one of my favorite Final Fantasies. In Seed's Hideout, there's an NPC which may look familiar. When lightning struck, his yoke did break, his life his own again. With thunders roll, he knew his fate. Now let's talk about a thing that the most passionate Final Fantasy XIV music fans might have noticed already. Um, the Final Fantasy XIV influences in 16. When the first trailer of 16 came out, I made a video talking about how the prelude in 16 is very similar in terms of musical language and style to the Crystal Tower theme in Final Fantasy XIV for several things, several reasons. And as soon as I heard it, I was like, this is token 100%. And I was, you know, that was correct. Because obviously, when it's the same composer scoring a game that's sort of similar, he may end up doing stuff that is quite similar. And that has happened. Soken actually gave nods to the 14 score. For example, there's the uh, Garuda fight where we hear a short motif that comes from 14, and it's this one. Another thing people have noticed and mentioned often is the fact that the normal battle theme, or what we suppose is the normal battle theme of 16, its leading melody is literally the melody from Eureka, an area from Final Fantasy XIV. This is what they sound like compared. As a massive like lore nerd and passionate theory crafter, I may love to think about the fact that this means that Final Fantasy XIV and XVI are connected and XVI is a shard of the world or something. But I think the explanation of why these nods are there is more technical than that, other than the fact that, you know, Soken is the composer of both games. And I read on the Dan Famicom uh, Gamer interview that the development for Final Fantasy uh, 16 basically started after Heavensward. When they were working the 3.1 patch for Heavensward, they also started working on 16, and that's like a long time ago. And Soken was basically hired to do the 16 soundtrack around that time. So I'm not sure if this is correct, but what that would imply is that Soken was basically writing the soundtrack to Final Fantasy XIV from 3.1 up to recently, and the soundtrack of Final Fantasy XVI at the same time, in parallel, together. So when we think about the fact that, oh wow, XIV has inspired XVI, we may be correct, but actually I think XVI also inspired XIV. Uh, I think the, the choir in the Shadowbringers theme, or in To the Edge, it's probably something that Soken wrote inspired by his work on 16, which would be freaking amazing and uh, would explain why ever since Shadowbringer we had such a big shift in like that epic male choir. But anyway, there is something interesting that happened in the development of Final Fantasy 16, which I suppose may be one of the reasons why we have these similarities in the soundtrack uh, that fans have noticed. And uh, this thing that happened basically happens in the development of literally any, almost any game, which is temp music. When, when you're working on a game as a composer, oftentimes people send you like, oh, here's this cutscene, we want you to make music for it, or here's this boss fight, here's this battle, or here's this area, we want you to write music for it. And when you're sent that, usually the game directors will have usually put some temporary music from another game just to nail the vibe, to be like, oh, this is sort of music would probably work here. And apparently, on Final Fantasy 16, a lot of the temp music that was used is music from Final Fantasy 14. So maybe during the Garuda fight, originally they used Fallen Angel, the Garuda theme from Final Fantasy 14, as temp music. 
And then your job as a composer is going there and usually either write something that is kind of similar but original and new or you can just ditch the temp music and do your own thing, basically. It, it really depends on a case-by-case -case basis. But I get the feeling that probably in the moments where Soken referenced Eureka or he referenced the Garuda theme, probably it was because they noticed that those melodies work so freaking perfectly for those moments in 16 and they decided to withhold those and use them, recontextualize them in a new arrangement for 16. I suppose that may be what happened. Obviously, they can do this because they're Square Enix and they own 14 and 16. So that's a very specific case. One more thing that I read in the damn Famicom interview that made me very happy is that Final Fantasy 16 soundtrack is going to feature something that I wished for it to have. You see, around a year and a half ago, before many of the trailers that we saw got released, I was starved for 16 music. I needed to hear more. So I decided to write it myself. And I wrote this imaginary boss theme thinking about what the game could sound like, but also how they could implement it in the game. And I wrote a theme that had adaptive scoring in mind. The idea was, as long as you're in the boss fight or fighting monsters, and you're not doing anything too epic, the theme is gonna play normally, sort of like this. That's the theme I wrote. I wanted the music to be responsive to you. And if you as a player were doing some crazy combos or use some super attacks and do some really stylish shit, then the, the same track would feature some epic choir, like this. In that sense, the score would be adaptive and kind of adapt to you, and according to what you're doing or according to the stakes of the fight, it would enhance your feelings by changing the arrangement slightly. That was my idea of adapting scoring for a game like Final Fantasy XVI, where the company is mostly action and there's a lot of things happening all the time. And I really wish that they would make a score that is adaptive. And I'm happy to say that's what they made. And I, I don't know if they implemented it exactly the same way. That's just the way I imagined it. I didn't read much about how the adaptive system was made or how it was implemented in the game. So I don't know much about that. But they did mention it. Then Famicom interview, Soken, I think, mentioned that the score is adaptive and they spent a substantial amount of time making sure that it would work well in the game while maintaining the musicality of the tracks. And that's the hardest thing to do. So I'm very curious to learn more. Maybe that's something I'm going to make a video about after playing the entire game. But I'm so glad that they went through it. And another thing, last thing that I'm super glad when it comes to this soundtrack is that this soundtrack features a vocal theme as it is tradition for Final Fantasy for a while now. Now, personally, uh, with an exception for Final Fantasy 14 and the 13 series, I was never really fond of the vocal themes of Final Fantasy. I know it's just me, it's just a thing that I, for me, but whenever I heard them, they, except for those games, 13 and 14, whenever I heard the vocal themes, I always felt like they didn't really fit the game too much. It felt like they were just music put on top of the game as opposed to music written for the game. In 13 and 14, the vocal themes were written for the game and they're freaking amazing. Now, this vocal theme right here, which is called Moon Gazing for 16, has been written by Kenshi Yonezu, who's the freaking legendary music producer and vocalist uh, who sang on, for example, uh, the Chainsaw Man opening, which I made a video about. And in that video, you can see me losing my shit at how good this man is and how well he understood Chainsaw Man when he wrote that theme, Kickback. Now, apparently in Final Fantasy 16, it's kind of similar what he did. In the interview, they mentioned that Kenshi Yonezu actually played the entirety of the game before writing the song, Moon Gazing. So again, this is not one of those things that's just written on top of the score and whatever, I didn't play the game, here's the theme, just put it there. But this is a theme where he played the game and he's like, what does this story tell me? What, what can I hear from these characters? And, blah, blah, and let me write about those experiences. So I'm very happy that I went with that choice and I'm very happy that I went with Kenshi Yonzu because this guy is freaking crazy good. So I uh, really expect that that theme in the game is gonna basically be a massive tearjerker played at very specific moments and... Uh, it's gonna feel way more powerful than many others that we've heard. But hey, listen, I'm not saying that they're all bad or something. I'm just saying that for me personally, they never pulled my heartstrings as much as they did in 13 and 14. And uh, judging from the way they're talking about it here, seems like this one is also gonna do it for me. Anyway, I've been rambling long enough and uh, it's not too long now before this game comes out. So I really hope that you guys are going to get to enjoy the soundtrack as much as I did. And I can't wait to hear more of what they did. 
can't wait to hear all the different themes for all the different nations, themes for the different characters, and I can't wait to experience the story. And just seeing all these leitmotifs being used so much, even just in the first few hours, tells me that this is a story worth exploring and worth playing. And uh, special thanks to Square Enix, by the way, for inviting me to play the game twice. I'll see you guys in the next videos. Bye. Mm.